I'm going to go back now um, to my search results and I'm going to open up a different one so that you can see a slight difference. And let's see which one here. Okay, it's this one called The Video Gamer's Dilemma, Entertainment versus Morality. So it's in a journal called Journal of Arts, Science and Commerce. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Under editorial information, there really isn't anything. Like it doesn't tell us what kind of peer review process it has. So fair enough. It just maybe they just didn't enter it into the database. So what I need to do in this case to get more information about the journal itself is I need to go to the journal homepage and usually there's a link to that from the directory of open access journals. And what I'm looking for is do they have a peer review process? That's the first thing. So let's see here. Um, about the journal editorial board submission guidelines. Okay, let's try about the journal. Let's see what it says. Okay, so it is um, a refereed. So that's a, that's a word that you'll sometimes see that that does mean um, uh, reviewed, peer reviewed. And it says here that it's a online in print mode peer reviewed research journal. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, it's, it's got peer review even though it didn't have the information in the directory of open access journals. That's great. One other little piece of information that I sometimes like to look for is do, do researchers have to pay money to get their work published in the journal? And it's just an extra piece of the puzzle that I can look at. It doesn't necessarily mean that the article is not credible, but it does say something about the publishing process. So let's see here. Usually it'll tell you in the submission guidelines. So I'm going to go here on the left hand side and click there. So this is telling us about, um, you know, like everything, how they have to format their paper and all that, how they have to do their references. Um, okay. And now the publication fees. So if the paper is accepted for publication, the authors will be asked to pay article processing charges. And um, if you're from an in international, uh, like so this is published in India, so Indian authors have a specific amount of money that they pay and then international authors pay this amount. So that's kind of interesting. Um, the, the first article that we looked at, the one from the University of Montenegro, I actually did go myself um, and look at their journal's webpage to get information about it, and they said that they don't, you don't have to pay to publish it, um, to publish your research in their journal. This one you do. So it's just worth thinking critically about what that means. So if someone can submit a paper to a journal and it's a double-blind peer review process, they don't have to pay anything, then that means one thing maybe. And then if you've got another journal that's open access, but people can submit, there's not much details about how their peer review process works, and people also have to pay money to put their article in it. Um, it may or may not mean anything, but it's worth thinking about critic if, you're, if you want to think critically about the papers that you're looking at. And if, since in this case I don't really feel totally sure, what I can do is go back to the original page for, the, for this article. I can actually go to the full text. And once again, I can look and see if there's any information about these people. So this person works at St. Thomas University in um, Florida. This person also works there. And this person works at Mahatma Gandhi University in India. So I feel like pretty good about the fact that these people all work at institutions of higher learning. So they probably have pretty good credentials. However, I just want to point out one more thing about this article, and it has to do with the language that they're using. We're going to quickly look, and re look at and read a part of the abstract. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. I'm going to read this second sentence out loud. So this is about video games today. Now it is emerged as one of mainstream mass medium and an industry worth billions. Okay, then video games and its popularity grew around the sphere, regardless demographic and geographic taxonomy. So neither of those sentences are grammatically correct and they don't really make sense. So this is an, another clue that I would use to say that maybe this is a paper that I wouldn't really be trusting. 
So even though it has peer review process and the authors are from um, universities, they probably have good credentials. There's sort of two warning flags for me. One is that people have to pay to publish in this journal, which isn't always a bad thing, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. And the language that they're using is not sound. So for me, I would say this journal article is, I would probably, my ultimate assessment would be, this one is not gonna meet my credibility standards. So here's the thing about determining credibility. In the context of this workshop, we've really been focusing on academic credibility or academic expertise. And that's really valuable, um, and it's especially valuable when we're talking about doing research paper as members of that academic community. But there are other kinds of expertise that I think we need to be aware of. And what I'd like to do is share a different topic with you as an example. Uh, just to illustrate how, in fact, there might be different kinds of expertise out there and how a person or a group could be considered an, a credible source still. The example that I want to work with is homelessness. So yes, there are definitely academic researchers out there who have credentials, who have really sound research methods, who work at universities, who study homelessness, and who are experts on the topic. But there are other people who might also have expertise in this topic. And I'm thinking specifically of maybe people who work with homeless populations. So this could include folks like doctors, uh, maybe social workers, also teachers, um, even law enforcement, and city governments who provide services for them. Another thing that we might want to think about is people who have actual lived experience. So those who actually have experienced homelessness have a different level of expertise about it than someone who's an academic researcher. I really advocate for a wide approach to understanding credibility and expertise. But just for the purposes of this workshop, we're going to be focusing on the academic community that you're part of, because as you learned in the Level 1 series, the peer review publication process is the means by which academics communicate with one another, it's how we share the new discoveries that we come up with and advance knowledge in the field. So let's move on now to an activity that will give you some practice assessing credibility within this context. <music>